In this video, we're going to look at how Power Query performs rounding. Now you might be thinking, why would I care how Power Query performs rounding? Isn't it just the same as it is in Excel? Well, actually, no. There are differences between how Excel performs rounding and how Power Query performs rounding. We're going to learn how there's a natural bias in rounding when performing it in the more traditional way. This will lead us to see how Power Query is a little more equitable when it comes to rounding. We'll look at a few real-world examples, and then I'll show you how to get Power Query to perform rounding the way Excel does it, if that's what you prefer. But I'll also show you how to get Excel to perform rounding like Power Query, if that's what you prefer. So let's look at the rounding differences between Excel and Power Query. Excel uses a traditional rounding strategy. And when I say traditional, what I mean is it's the method that most of us were taught when we were in our early schooling. Power Query, on the other hand, uses the ASTM E29 rounding strategy. Now that sounds very impressive if you could say that at a cocktail party, but it's much easier to use some of the other names it goes by, such as Banker's Rounding or Halfway Even Rounding. So let's understand the problem when it comes to rounding in Excel versus Power Query. Let's take a number and look at all the possible fractions when calculating to one decimal place. If we were to use traditional rounding like we learned in school, where less than 5 we discard and 5 or higher we round up, and this is the way Excel does things, we'd see that 4, 3, 2, and 1 are just discarded, leaving us with the whole number, whereas 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are used to round up the 1's place, so the 5's go to 6's. This creates a natural bias at 5, meaning there are more opportunities to round in an upward direction than a downward direction. Now, if you're not seeing the problem here yet, imagine if every time you rounded up, you got a cookie. Well, that means five out of the nine times, one person would get a cookie, but four out of the nine times, another person would get a cookie. So someone is clearly benefiting from this strategy. What would be more equitable is if we took the halfway point and considered that a tie. And whenever we have a tie, half the time will rule in one person's favor and half the time will rule in the other person's favor. So now instead of one person getting five cookies and one person getting four, we'll take one of those cookies and split it and give it to the other person. So now whenever we're rounding by five, half of the time we'll just discard the five and the other half of the time we'll round up. So as I stated, Power Query uses the ASTM E29 standard. To give you an idea of how this is more equitable, if we use the sample set of one million numbers accurate to one-tenth, and use traditional rounding, this will result in a 0.11% upward skew, meaning that if we added all those 1 million numbers up and they totaled to $51 million, the rounded version would apply an additional $56,000 to the sum. So if you're a bank and you're dealing with large sums of money, this can have quite an impact. Now banks rarely work in the 1 tenth dimension, so if we were to take that same 1 million numbers and make them accurate to 1 one hundredth, now there's only a 1 in 100 chance of landing in the 50 cent position. This results in a 0.01% upward skew. So that same $51 million sum would result in an additional $5,000 instead of $56,000. But again, this is using traditional rounding. If we use the ASTM E29 standard, this would result in a 0.0003% downward skew. So that same $51 million sum would actually be lowered by $140. And I'm sure any bank would rather keep $140 than spend $5,000 or $56,000. Let's look at an example and see exactly how this works. This file is available for download so you can look at all the formulas and all the queries. I've got a sample set of data with 100,000 transactions. Now these are just randomly generated fractions. In the next column, I'm using Excel's round function to round the value in column A to two decimal places. Now I've made all of these numbers end in five for this reason. In traditional rounding, anything less than five is discarded, and that's still the case here. Anything greater than five and the next position is increased, that's still the same. The only difference is when you're working with five. Now with Excel, every time it encounters five, it automatically rounds up. So you can see every one of these answers is rounding in an upward direction. This sheet demonstrates the problem. So here we have that same list of numbers, and here are those values when Excel encounters a five, it always rounds in an upward direction. But you see Power Query sometimes rounds in a downward direction, sometimes up, sometimes down. I have a little check column over here that shows us when Power Query does it the same way as Excel. And you can see like in this case, they both work the same way. In this case, they both work the same way. But what do all these have in common? In the original number, the value that precedes the five in each one of these is an odd number. 
So if the value that precedes the number we're rounding is an odd number, we will go ahead and round in an upward direction, just like a traditional method. But if the five is preceded by an even number, then we will discard. So where Excel says, I would have rounded upward because I see a five, Power Query says, I'm going to discard because that five is next to an even number. So if we're next to an even number, we discard. If we're next to an odd number, then we increment. If we were to total all of these values, Excel would round them to this number. Power Query would round them to this one. This results in an almost $500 difference between these two rounding strategies. If you need Power Query to round in the same manner that Excel rounds, when you implement the number.round function in the M code of the query, you'll need to take advantage of a third argument called rounding mode. So the first argument is the field that you're rounding, in this case number. The second argument is the place value that you're rounding to. And in my example, I'm gonna round to two places. But then the third argument, if I want Power Query to behave like Excel, I will add this rounding mode dot away from zero argument. Let's look at this in the M code. On the step where I perform the rounding, you can see my number.round function that takes the number field, rounds it to two decimal places, and is using the away from zero argument. Now when this function was created, let me delete this step. I took the number field, went to add column, rounding, round, and I told it to round to two decimal places. Now here's the function, but when I build it that way, it doesn't give me the option to add that third argument. At present, the only way to do this is to go into the M code, and after the second argument, type a comma, and now you'll see this third option for rounding mode. If you don't remember exactly what the argument is supposed to be, if you start typing in the word round, it will give you all of the rounding mode arguments here. And the one we're looking for is rounding mode away from zero. We'll give that formula change a check, and as you can see, all of the numbers changed. So now back in Excel, Excel's rounding totals to this value, Power Query's rounding totals to the exact same value, so we have a difference of zero. If you wish to do the opposite, if you wish Excel to perform rounding like Power Query because you perceive it to be more equitable, this rounding function is what you would use to do that. So in this first case, 28 cents, Power Query just leaves that at 28 cents, even though the next value position was five. Excel is now doing the same thing. So here's our total for all of the rounded values performed by Power Query. Here's our total for all of the rounded values performed by Excel, and they match, zero difference. Let's look at another example that shows where Excel's rounding strategy can have detrimental effects. We have a list of students here, and each student took four tests. If we take those four tests and average them, we end up with these test scores. Now these test scores are calculated to hundreds place precision. Our grading scale does not go to hundreds place precision. It's only targeted to whole numbers. So we use Excel's rounding function to round these values to the closest whole number, and we're given these values. Now I need to turn those values into letter grades, so I'll use a lookup function to do that. And now we can see the letter score that each student receives. If we had taken these same scores and used Power Query to calculate the averages and then round them to a value, Power Query would have calculated these values as such. And if we take those numbers and apply a letter grade lookup, we see that the letter grades derived from Power Query's lookup do not match the letter grades derived from Excel's lookup. Notice that in Excel's case, any student that is writing that razor's edge between one grade letter and another gets rounded up, thus receiving a higher grade than they actually achieved. Power Query's average results in a more technically correct answer, so you have to make the exact cutoff to receive the grade. You cannot receive that grade from a rounded cutoff. So if you want to be more lenient in the giving of the grades, you'll use Excel's round. If you want to be more strict, you'll use Power Queries. So now that you know that there are differences in the strategies of rounding between Excel and Power Query, you're better equipped to decide which strategy you prefer. But if you're forced to work in one application but wish it to perform like the other, you now know the tricks to be able to achieve that behavior. Remember to download this file to get access to all the M code, all the queries, and all the Excel functions. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Feel free to leave us a comment and take advantage of other videos in our library. And if you have a suggestion for a video, put that in the comments too. Because remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.